Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, what's a detail in a movie that seems minor, but it bugs the shit out of you? Well, there's the classic. There's the classic one, which is in any movie where there's a bow and arrow, you shoot someone, and as soon as the arrow hits them, it's it's, it's an instant kill. <laughs> no matter where it hits them, they're dead. They're down. Right. They're gone. They're deadsies. And it's like, no. It's not how that works. Hits them in the shoulder, and they just... Right to the ground. Yeah. 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 Even though they have armor on. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> armor doesn't protect you from everything. But, you know, like, you know, there's a reason why in some of those movies you see them just like break off the end of the arrow and they keep on fighting. Right. You know, hell in uh, uh, Kingdom of Heaven. Liam Neeson's character says, I once fought two days with an arrow in my testicle. So, you know, there you go. That sounds miserable. It's Every time he says that line, I'm like, Ugh. he was not wielding the scrote glove. <laughs> That's right. The scrote glove yeah. that allows you to have all magical powers. Every D and D player knows it. Um, That's right. Yeah. Or if they're really badass, what they'll do is then when they get shot, you know, they'll take the shield and go and cut them off, oh, yeah. and they'll be like, "How rumpf!" Like three. Or or whenever they get stabbed with something, they just rip it out. I'm like, that is the worst thing right. you can do. Right. Exactly. You know, <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, that is yeah. you just did way more damage to your body. <laughs> In fact, you may bleed out now really bad because of that, because at least the arrow was pushed in there. You should have left, like, left that in, yeah. Yeah, now you're like, I'm going to rip it out with the, the arrowhead in there. It's like, no, 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 no. What do that. was, I can't remember if it was Fall Guy or there was some movie I was just watching. It was more of a comedy base, but they got something in them like that and they were like, I'm going to take it out. And everyone's like, you should leave it in. They t- he took it out. He's like, oh, it's so much worse. And they're like, yeah, you should have left it in. <laughs> That's so much worse it's, now. <laughs> um, I would say for me, one of the, one of the big ones that's, that that comes to mind right away is uh, when someone knocks someone else out mm-hmm. from behind. They'll walk up and either with the butt of a gun or with some sort of a billy club or something, they'll just hit them on the back of the head and it knocks them out. And I'm like, no, one of two things would happen in real life. One, that person is going to go, fuck, that really hurt. And they're still going to be awake. Or two, you've killed them. Mm-hmm. Blood force trauma to the head. You don't know what it takes to knock someone out. There's very little chance you're going to do it perfect and accurate every time. Every mm-hmm. time I see someone do that, I'm like, that person just murdered that person. Yeah. Because also, yeah, they just wake up without a coma. I mean, right. I mean, without a concussion. Yeah. There's like, uh, where am I? It's like, yeah, no. Right. Uh, we could assume that, you know, you're doing a Jacob's Ladder right now and you're just experiencing everything as you're slowly dying. Right, exactly. Know, yeah, yeah. On the floor. <clears throat> yeah, that is, I mean, there is... So many, so many problems that will come from being hit in the head like that. And yeah. uh, or when someone's like they're whatever, they got someone tied up and then they just punch them to knock them out. Yeah. Just like in the front too, like not just yeah. in the back. They just giving someone just a shot across the jaw. I'm like, I don't feel like that's how that works. I mean, we see it in UFC. People get knocked out. But for how long? You exactly. I mean? Well, for how long and like how many punches have they taken? <laughs> Like, yeah, right. And it, if it was that easy, you'd think that every UFC person was just do the one shot knockout. Like it, you've got to mm-hmm. hit him just right. The right combination of things have mm-hmm. to happen for that. Yeah. So just for someone to be like, "Enough out of you, crack." No, take him out, Jimmy. Take- you got it, boss. <laughs> Pow. <laughs> Make him go night night, Jimmy. Time to go night night. You piece of shit. <laughs> um, another one uh, that bugs me is. Movies involving other nationalities okay. who use the empirical system of measurement. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Uh, spe- specifically uh-huh. recently, I watched for like, I don't know, the hundredth time, uh, Master and Commander. Okay. Uh, starring Russell Crowe. And this is a an English ship, a British ship, during the 1800s, you know, dealing with Napoleon and things like that. They're fighting the French. And at one point in time, they're like, oh my gosh, with that big a ship that they have, I mean, she could do up to 100 miles a day. I'm like, mm, <laughs> mm, mm. I know this was made for American audiences, 
but I don't believe you. I don't believe you'd say 100 miles a day, you know? Yeah. Or they're like, X amount of yards off the starboard bow. And I'm like, no, not yards. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. I don't nope. even think, I don't even think uh, Americans who are super into boating and such use the empirical. Like, I, no. I feel like that's just wrong on so many levels to use. Yeah. Oh, to use get that the nine pounder referring to, a, you know, a, a cannon. I'm right. like, no. False dot com. No. No, I think you mean six stone, sir. Give me the six stoner, you know, <laughs> which has a whole different meaning depending on what movie right. you're watching. Yeah, so those sort of things always make me go, Ugh, "This right. is such a good movie, but why? Do why you, are we doing?" Because uh, does it ever take yeah. you out of it when people use five five five, that old school Hollywood number? No, like I, because I just grew up on that. Yeah, so like so I just I knew that it's like, oh, this is a fake number. It's yeah. fine. Like I don't need to be like, oh, it's not a real number because people would call them because people suck, and we'll get more into that later. <laughs> <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I feel like I feel like uh, there. I, I don't know why there are sometimes. Uh, that it does bother me, and sometimes that it doesn't, and I don't really know like. <clears throat> if it's written, I feel like it's not that big of a deal. But if someone says, if someone's giving a number and they're like five, 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 one, two, three, four, like if they if they well, speak it out loud, I I feel like that's when it takes me out. Well, you know what's weird now is if they don't give you an area code, right? You know? Exactly. If they just go five, 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 four, <clears throat> three, two, and it's like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? Hold like, on, so many listen, questions. Where I grew up, yeah, we didn't use an area code. It was just like, yeah, man, six six five eight one two two. Everyone knew the area code. We were all in the same you area code. You just presumed that was yeah. Cell phones didn't exist right then, so like, yeah, you knew the like everyone had the same thing. Right, and then and then our area code changed. Uh, we originally were eight one two, then we were six six zero, and so then there was that. But then what cell phones were invented, it's like yeah, like. Fucking, you gotta know the area code. Some people are like, like today. The other day, like I, a couple, a couple months ago, I saw someone put a like a for sale by owner uh, sign out in front of their uh, yard, and it was just like it didn't have the area code. That had like, to look five, so five, weird. Three one three two. I'm like, what the fuck do they call? What <laughs> area code? This could be three one two. This could be seven seven three. This could be eight one five. I don't fucking know. This could like, be two one nine. I mean, you don't know if it's uh, like an Indiana now. Like, who, wh no, where I, are you no from? clue. Right? Yeah. I was like, what? 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 And how? And it was out there for a long time because I'm like, no one knows who to call. No they don't, don't know the area code. code. <laughs> they no have to guess. Us why, up, would, man. Yeah. why would you make them guess? Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Well, like, and that's the thing. Like with landlines, like you again, like you. At a certain point, depending on where you were, what time, et cetera, et cetera, maybe. But like you said, with cell phones now, <clears throat> who knows? This guy might be from Seattle, you know, yeah. or California. Like, you don't know what what you're supposed to be calling. My first cell phone I got in the Quad Cities was a 309 area code. There you go. I moved right. to Chicago. And I remember my buddy uh, who was going into uh, the CIA, I got called from a, a government agent who was like in the Quad City area. And he's like... Yeah, hey, uh, just wondering maybe if we could meet up. I go, oh no, I'm not, I'm not in there. I'm in Chicago. He goes, all right, uh, I'm gonna have my driver pull over, and I will just talk to you over the phone because he just assumed I was in the Quad City area because yeah. of my area code. I'm like, oh, no, shit. I moved. And he's like, oh, okay, well, we'll just do this over the phone. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's wait, so he was he in the Quad Cities? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was driving, and he was like, cool, well, yeah. I guess we'll just stop then. I was like, first of all, uh, and again, to anyone who's like, the government's a big conspiracy, like, smartest people in the world, this guy didn't even fucking check to see where I lived. <laughs> and he worked for the CIA. So Yeah, so everyone chill your tits about the, uh, yeah, the old conspiracy theories. Yeah, yeah, nukes are real, you fucking idiots. Uh, <laughs> you got any other uh, gripes about movies, about little details? Yeah. Uh, not little. I mean, the, the only one, uh, the one I was thinking after me was the just the John Wick franchise in general. Yeah, as oh much yeah. as I love John Wick, just the uh, like, there's a there's a point to where movies do, like you can suspend. I guess this is it's it's the it's the uh, it's the minor. What takes you out of a movie? It's you know a minor I mean? detail in a major way. I guess like <laughs> if that you, you'll like. So if anyone's seen the John Wick franchise in the second in the second movie, they introduce these Kevlar. Like suits, and I'm talking like night, like Tom Ford, like fitted suits, and uh, you know you can just like raise your raise your uh, jacket over your face and protect from bullet shots. In the first one, they use, or in the second one, they use it like to the point where you're like, all right, I can suspend disbelief. In the fourth one, he's taken like full clips from multiple people 
and just running you know and i'm like there's there's a point to where even with the most absurd things that you suspend disbelief you're just like i'm taken out of this now as much as i shoot him in the hand shoot him in the hand shoot him in the face shoot him in the face shoot shoot him in the i don't know what right like his hands up here the top of his head's exposed so yeah there's look there's a ton of things that that uh that that are those little things like you said uh earlier in our production meeting a lot of them you don't realize until you're watching you're like there it is wait now i can't unsee it you know yeah, there's sometimes where something will irk me and I don't realize it until I rewatch it again. I'm mm-hmm. like, wait a minute. Um, right. I just rewatched the Matrix trilogy. Um, and um, the, in the first one, when Neo goes in for the first time, you know, after, you know, he's learning, you know, jujitsu. Yeah. He's like, oh, I like it. And, and then Tank goes, hey, Mikey, I think he likes it. I'm like, are you referencing a life cereal <laughs> commercial? That even at the time this movie came out, it was kind of like worn out. According to what we know from Morpheus at the time of this film, this is closer to twenty one ninety nine. Right? How the fuck do you know that? How do reference? you know this reference? That is such a good point. How do you know that reference, sir? You know, do you expect someone to be like, "Oh, that was so good"? Where's the beef? Right? You know, like or Auto Zone. So it's, just, <laughs> it's like we gotta get in the zone. Auto Zone. <laughs> there, there is one that uh, that drives me nuts. Now that we're getting more into uh, AI becoming mm-hmm. more powerful, it's it's more plausible, I suppose now. But back in the day, when they would they would be looking at security footage and it'd be like, "Wait, zoom in there now, enhance." You you don't have any more pixels to enhance this. Like this is this is the image. When you zoom in, it's just gonna get worse. Yeah, there's no enhance. Which I I kind of like that in the movie The Departed. Like when yeah. Matt Damon is his character is is looking to see who was following him in the street and he yeah. zooms in, it just gets blurrier. Right. He knows he's like, This is the best I can get. I can't make out who this is. It's just out of yeah. desperation. You know, it's whatever. But she's just like, you know what? Just circle in around there and right. then do 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 and so, and go, can you clean that up for me? And they're like, yeah. yeah, I got it. And I'm like, what do you type? That's another thing. That's another thing. People that are working on computers are always fucking typing. Right. No yes. one's using a mouse. Right. It, everything is keystrokes, right? And I understand that like Coders and hackers and stuff do a lot of stuff with keystrokes, but come on. I know shortcuts too. Come on. You know, yeah. I know shortcuts in Premiere Pro and, and whatnot, but most of the things is you gotta move your mouse around right. and click on shit. Like <laughs> I get now that I'm thinking about it, the one of the other ones is uh it's like someone sits down at a computer, like an espionage film, they sit down at a computer that they've never been on before, and in thirty seconds they've got the files they need. Like yeah. I can't find files on my own computer. Right. Like sometimes I'm like, where the fuck did I save this? And they're just like, all right, I'm in. I got it. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? How did you do that? And again, to a point you made earlier in our, in our meeting, which was like, I get it. I don't need to see someone for five minutes, click around and be like, nope, nope, that's not there. Oh, that's Let me the see porn here. folder. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going in the Explorer. Wow, they have this organized terribly, right. you know, because let's face it, most of my corporate like folders, I'm like, who built this? This doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> Right. It's like, you know, final version one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, final, final, final yeah. three. Like, you know, like, what the fuck? Yes. Like, what? Yes. 100%. Yeah. So, like, yeah. When, yeah, you don't, when you don't know what the fucking file naming you know, no. uh, systems are for there's wherever any, you are. There's any number of places where this could be. Yeah. yeah. Don't tell right. me they've got it just sitting on their desktop going files for files for the good guy to find, you know? Right. Right. Well, even like Iron Man in the very first one where Pepper goes yes. in, she just puts the drive on, you know, yes. it's just like it automatically downloads. I'm like, mm. and I guess I you mean, could suspend disbelief. Iron Man's smart it. enough. To, right. Yeah. You He's know. got Jarvis a program on there that right. goes, you plug it in, it knows what files you want. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's on the network that he knows. So, you know, it's a little more plausible in that regard yeah. to make that happen. But, but still, uh, most computer things I'll say. I yeah. do. The, it's just again, they're small, but they're just like that's ah, not real. That's not real. Yeah. Going back to verbiage, though, uh, another one is he does is as everyone's getting ready to go in to go see the Oracle, he's like, "All right, check and make sure the seatbelt sign is active." And he's like, he's making like airplane like references to right. things. Like you You've know, never flown in a only- plane. I was like, "What plane? Right. What what seatbelt sign? You guys live on, you know, the the the, the outcome or whatever it is. You guys are eating the slop, and you're like making <laughs> references to life cereal and being in an airplane. Right? It's like those are just nods. But the thing is, like, as a viewer, I'm like, 
You could be like, wow, that was pretty good, huh? Do you want to learn some more martial arts, you fucking insane person? As opposed to, ooh, Mikey, I think he likes it. Or, hey, everybody, let's go see the Oracle. As opposed to, please make sure and check and see that the seatbelt sign is activated. I'm like, okay, I get it. You're being cool. You're being quippy or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, write something else. Like, it doesn't make sense for this apocalyptic future where machines are murdering people and growing them in vats for energy. Machines. We can say... <laughs> exactly i heard that i heard that exact moment i was like hey there it is um but yeah anyway those are those are fun things yeah let us know what are some of the little things that drive you nuts in movies that like pull you out of the moment and you're like Ugh, i really wish they wouldn't do that we'd love to hear it where can they where can they let us know that though doug they can let us know on the fucking internet all right <laughs> all our social media is at mind gap podcast shots fired or- YouTube.com slash MindGapPodcast. Uh, if you're watching the episode there, hit us up in the comments down there. Or click the link in the description to head over to our Discord and head over to the podcast discussion. Uh, drop some stuff in there. Uh, while you're in the links, you can check out links to our Patreon and our merch as well. And uh, hit the like button, subscribe. If you've been doing that, we appreciate you. Appreciate all the love. Thank you for all you're doing. And just do mm-hmm. us a solid and share this around. Let people know what's up. Let, let get people involved with, with MindGap business. We want you in our business. All right? Be part of the business. You can help us grow the business. And this is a profit-sharing company. Mm-hmm. You can get a lot of theoretical dollars out of this yeah. business. We're not going to screw you over like crypto does. Mm-mm. Yeah. We're not going to screw you over like some governor did with their dog that she couldn't train. And just, you know, take it out to the gravel pit and, you know, blast it to to heaven. <laughs> if, if we can't train you, we'll take the time to work on it. <laughs> That's right. We promise that. You know, we won't take you out to the gravel pit no. right away if you try to eat chickens. You right. know, like, we'll we'll take the time to be like, hey, no, don't do that. In fact, you know, we might join you in preparing the chicken and eating a meal with you. Exactly. Yeah. You know, co- company meals. You right. Know, you get on Fridays, we buy lunch, you know, sometimes it's chicken. Yeah. And if, if that doesn't say, wow, this is a cool, hip corporate place, then I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what to tell you. You know, guys, we've got kombucha on, on draft kombucha, you know, and we also have oatmeal cream pies, you know. <laughs> Have to put oatmeal in front of that, otherwise it gets weird. It, you know? it does, yes. Well, then HR gets involved and it's a whole thing. And they get all mad. Yeah. I'm like, it's oatmeal. Cream and pies. Joel's like, why are you calling me again? I don't work for you. Please stop You're bringing like, me into HR issues. Stop this. You're like, I need you to defend me on this cream pie business. She's like, I won't do that again. Right. <laughs> also, again. I'm not an attorney, Doug. Stop Stop thinking I'm a... Learn what I do. I need you to defend me. Come to court and defend Come me. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> what court? I don't what know. Court? What court? What did you do? We got sued? What's going on? Good Lord. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. All right. Okay. Picture this. You're trapped in a never-ending loop of neighborly pleasantries. The weather, the lawn, the road construction happening a few blocks away. It's like Groundhog Day but with khakis and awkward smiles. Good news, my introverted friend. Your days of insufferable woe are over. Introducing pessimism prompter. Your earpiece escape from the mundane. Hush. The pessimism prompter is a sleek, flesh-toned, AI-powered prompter that fits discreetly in your ear. When that asshole Kevin approaches, simply activate it by letting out a long sigh under your breath and repeat whatever it tells you to say. Hey there, nice day, huh? (sighs) Indeed. Did you know that entropy increases as the universe marches toward its inevitable heat death? (laughs) Oh, uh, what's that now, good buddy? Entropy, disorder, chaos, we're all just particles dancing in the void, neighbor. Meaningless, pointless. I just just wanted to talk to you about my hyacinths that were starting to bloom. Hyacinths. A fleeting burst of chlorophyll in the grand cosmic symphony. Blink, and they're gone. Okay. But you, neighbor, you persist like a stubborn weed in the garden of existence. Well, I'll let you get back to uh, whatever it is you're up to there. Yes, return to your beige banal reality. The pessimism prompter, because silence is the truest companion. Warning, may induce existential dread, nihilism, and sudden desire for career change. Give me, give me two of those. Yeah? Please. <laughs> I, had, I had you in mind when I was writing this. Get me two of those. Stat. <laughs> Stat. It's a whole um, different story when you buy a house. Yes. 
And you have neighbors, <clears throat> permanent <Yeah>. neighbors. <laughs> Pray to God you get good ones. Uh, Justin, you plan on making any trips this summer? Uh, we're going to New York, in fact. Uh, this uh, We're recording this on Monday. On Wednesday, we're heading out. Oh, on Wednesday. On Wednesday. You're heading out to old New York City. NYC is the place to be. New York City. Everyone remember that commercial? How come we don't see that in movies? Right? How come Tank didn't say that in The Matrix? He's, yeah, they're he's eating like, their slop, he's like, and he's like, this could use I know, salsa. I knew jujitsu. He's like, New York City? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. That's problematic. <laughs> I don't see how that works. Jiffy Lube. You're just saying the name of a business, <laughs> sir. Ding, ding. <laughs> Jiffy Lou. <laughs> just Double okay. A, Hong Kong, MCO. By Manon. <laughs> Feeling good in the neighborhood. <laughs> hey, Neo, when you're here, you're family. <laughs> I really like Don't. this. Ba da ba ba ba. He's loving it. It's like. Morpheus, the machines, they're coming. Don't worry. We've got the meats. <laughs> I'm out. That's all I got. <laughs> I was going to start reaching deep for the 80s ones, but we'll... Uh, I was like, we'll I don't know what yeah. else we got. All right, cool. So you're going to New York City. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be tourists in New York City. Nice. Are you going to be a fucking asshole while you're there? Uh, the goal is to not, but you know, anything's possible. Hey, you went in New I'm York City, rub a dub dub, I think is what they say. <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> um, well, that's good. I'm glad you're not playing on being an asshole because apparently most people that travel are assholes. And not just Americans, just most people. Just most in people in general. Tourism. Tourism. Is, it breeds comes assholes. With it. Boy, is it is it nice, but it comes at great cost. Yes. And usually it means you have to deal with other people, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Uh, you shared this article from the AP, it says, to fend off tourists, a town in Japan is building a big screen blocking the view of Mount Fuji. And I immediately was like, fuck yeah. Let's go. <laughs> the agent let's of chaos a, inside of you was like, let's you Let's do war this. on tourists. <laughs> fuck those people. Um, so this town of... Uh, what's the name of this town, Justin? Uh, Kawaguchiko, I think, is um, how what? I would pronounce it. Is Kawaguchi... Fuji Kawaguchiko? Kawaguchiko. Oh, yeah. I sorry. I was looking at third paragraph down. Kawajuki. Yeah. yeah. F I think maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm doing my best to try to pronounce it, and that's what I got. True or false? Kawaguchiko. Is that what something you'd say while tickling a significant other? <laughs> or maybe if a baby? Kawaguchiko. Kawaguchiko. If, if, we if we were there, I would for sure. I like to, <laughs> you, often when I'm tickling someone, I'll just say the name of the city that I'm in. <laughs> like last time you and I were in Kirksville, Chicago together. Kirksville, Kirksville. Yeah, I you was know? just like, Chicago, Doug, Chicago. <laughs> Kawaguchiko. I just feel like it's so adorable. Uh, you look at the word and you're like, oh my God, I can't say that. Yeah. Um, but apparently in this town of Kawaguchiko, uh, it's, it's known. It's built on tourism. And a lot of what they're uh, known is there's a great spot of Mount Fuji, which is a beautiful mountain in Japan. And part of the problem is that a whole bunch of assholes come here and they fuck everything up. They, uh, they litter. They cross the road with busy traffic. They ignore traffic lights. They trespass into private properties. And the, generally, they're just like, a lot of people are like, God, we have to tolerate this. The people are the the locals are essentially hostages to these tourists. Yeah, you know, because God forbid you say, Hey, you fucking asshole, I'm trying to get to work, and they're like, This guy ruined my experience. They're rude in Kawaguchiko. You know what? I wouldn't say that while I tickle my grandchild. I wouldn't do it because <laughs> that just reminds me of how rude they are at that town. Me 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 me. Um. But then particularly, there's like a, a, a convenience store called Lawson that like has a wonderful view of Mount Fuji. And people are like just hanging out there. Some people are yeah. getting on the roof. <clears throat> it looks like Mount Fuji is coming, it like sits on the roof of this. It's so perfectly mm -hmm. positioned. And so someone apparently posted it to Instagram and then another did. And, and it just started this chain reaction where people are like, we want to go to this spot. And because of the how 
viral things can go, everyone's like, oh, cool. This one location in this city is where we need to go. And it's just becoming, it's, it's becoming impossible to move around there to just to exist as a, as a resident. Yeah. Even they, they show a couple shots here of like, you can't see Mount Fuji because of cloud cover. People are still like hanging out in front of the loss and, and taking photos. Cause like, this is yeah. where it should be, but it's not because of cloud cover. And uh, this just boils my insights. Why is that? Reading about this because um, I'm going to sound like such a fucking like fart sniffer. Uh, but whenever I travel, I like to be not noticed by okay. the locals. I like to do my best to fit in, which is hard when you're 6'3", 250 pounds, a pimp. It's hard to really blend in and that sort of regard but what i like to do is like i like to be very considerate of my surroundings and understand like what is common like i like to do some sort of research to be like because i'm embarrassed of being an american sometimes when i see americans just acting the way they do and they just carry that on wherever they go um it's i think it's a it gives america a bad rep and uh because guess what the rest of the world is not america gang i know this is a big country and i know as we travel from state to state we pretty much have the same customs. We speak the same language. Like, it's pretty much whatever. So people are like, cool, I'm just flying across the ocean to another place. This I can just do what I always do. And it's like, no. You need to be considerate of that culture and what is considered okay. No, that's just like, I don't know, this is some common empathy of, hey, these people are trying to do their fucking jobs. Or people are just driving through and it's like, hold on, I need to, to take my life. fucking selfie. Right. I need to take my selfie of this fucking mountain. It's like... Uh, I I just the idea of inconveniencing other people so I could take a fucking picture right is gross to me. I, it's absolutely disgusting. I agree. When if you're interrupting their daily lives, this is like I understand that you're you're there on vacation. It's special for you, but at the same time, you're a visitor. This yeah. is you are like. Would you would you go and just start like throwing like hang out you know outside your if you were if someone was hosting you would you go hang outside their bedroom door at four in the morning and be loud and drunk and obnoxious and throw trash all over their house and you know like like you've you're a guest in the country act it yeah have some fucking oh, I, I guarantee you those people would be like not in my backyard literally right. not in my backyard uh i'll be throwing that shit in my backyard you know i uh um i remember um traveling abroad when I was in college and uh, just I was embarrassed a lot of times at some of the behavior of the folks I was traveling with we were in this sleepy little Italian town yeah and everyone went to bed and my class was walking across the square and someone was like Doug! I was like shut the fuck up right. people are sleeping what are you doing right they're just like I know it's 11 o'clock and for us it's like party time because we're in college but you can't fucking do that right you can't just be shouting across the, everyone's obviously asleep. What are you doing? Like, this is really just, just what are you doing? It's super rude. People were just barfing in public fountains. Yeah. You know, it's someone so got you, drunk. You had a Ugh. twofer because it was not only were like, it was, you were college kids too. Like mm-hmm. it was you know, like the obnoxious American, but also college. So yeah. there was like, it was all bets are off. That's, that's kind yeah. of the worst combination. Yeah. It was, it was not good. Um, but I'm sorry, they were was, puking was, in fountains. You said, so, you know, like, they have cool fountains in Europe, yeah. Uh, yeah. and someone was, like, got hammered and this barfed in it, and I was like, oh, oh my God. Just, that sucks. What are we doing? I mean, hell, even in Disney World, people were assholes. Like, oh, yeah. Jen and I went there one time, and it was at uh, Animal Kingdom, and there was a bridge, you know, that you could get a good shot of, uh, you know, Everest, you know, yeah. Expedition Everest, and this was probably, a, I don't know, family and friends, 20 people. And they were all on the bridge, and they're trying to get everyone to stop walking across the bridge so they could take a fucking photo. Oh. Literally, someone was like this, yeah. arms outstretched, and nothing made me happier to see Jill just walk right past him. And just Seriously? be like, fuck you. Jill's I love like, it. You don't get to stop traffic to take a fucking photo. Right. That's not how this works. Right. Like, you you don't get to do this for a fucking picture. Like, yeah. no. That's not how this works. I, I find that incredibly rude to be like, everyone stop moving! We're taking a picture. Right. It's like, eat my balls. <clears throat> like, no. See, it could go either way, though, right? Like, I feel like it's extremely rude, but then you've seen people, you've seen instances where people band together to make something happen for someone, right? Like, yeah. where you could see, like, f- flip that scenario just a little bit, and you could see, 
you know, uh, a, a whole bunch of strangers like form a chain together to stop people from coming in and like make allow this family to get their their photo like or everyone agrees to stop like like what is it that like that makes a situation one way or the other. You know what I mean? Like in this to situation, me it was, it was it's yeah. super annoying. But then there's some situations where you see everyone come together for the greater good of one individual. You know what I mean? In that in that situation, it was the audacity of people to like put their arms out and be like, stop. Right. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> no. You know, that's just the defiance of like, oh, I'm sorry. You want me to not get to where I want to go. Yeah. And my on my vacation. So you can take a fucking photo at, 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 on a bridge. A place that is known, a known choke point, you know, and you're telling people on both sides, everyone who's coming through, you're making everyone in this area stop Two-way moving so, yeah. you, so you can take a photo. Like, that's incredibly self-centered and rude. Yeah. Um, for me, it depends on the situation altogether. Like, if someone was, like, asking nicely or whatever, it's it's all on how you present it. It's the demanding or I think, and that's what a lot is with tourism, people are like, I'm entitled to be here because I'm on vacation. Right. And I, because I was a little entitled there too, right? What I just said. I was like, I'm on vacation. I, I don't want to stop so you can stopped. take a photo. Right. You know? I was like, get out of the way and find a different spot and take your fucking photo there. Don't do it where everyone else is trying to get through. This is this is a main thoroughfare. Sure. Get the fuck out of the way. You know, and I think that's the same thing with this. It's like people are like, I want to see Mount Fuji. I want to take a great photo of Mount Fuji, so I should be entitled to maybe, I don't know, step out into traffic so I can get a better angle. And I'm just like, yo, no. Right. You don't get to do that. Mm, right. Also, rules don't stop because you're on vacation. Also, this is going to get more just annoying, Doug, but like, do you have to take a photo? Can you sit there and just enjoy it? Right. This is a hippie Doug coming out. It's like, do we have to be like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta think, capture this moment. Does it all gotta be documented, man? Do we? Do I have to? Just like I, I took Natalie. Uh, I was a chaperone of Natalie's uh, um, trip to the zoo a couple weeks ago, and there was a dolphin show. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something about this dolphin show. You've all seen it. <laughs> Everyone's seen it. You may be like Doug. I've never been to Brookville Zoo. I may not. I don't think I've seen that show. No, you've seen it. You've seen it. We've all seen it. We've all seen a dolphin show. Therefore, you've seen this one. <laughs> and there were at least two people in the crowd that recorded the whole thing on their phone. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck you think you're capturing here, but Ooh. this is going to look like shit. It's going to sound like shit because it already sounded like shit just being there in real life. Right. And I'm like, what do you? when are you going to watch this dolphin show again? Uh, right. That's like, the thing. Are you going to go back and rewatch this entire show? Or are you going to subject someone? Are you going to have a captive audience and force someone to watch an entire dolphin show on your phone or screencast it up to your your fucking TV? And you're going to say, and you think someone's going to be like, "Boy, I'll tell you what. That right there puts the the shape of water to shame. That was beautiful." Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Look at that. Can we watch it those, again? Look at those dolphins, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, Justin. Maybe they're going to go home and edit it. You know, maybe they'll actually go and make some sort of edit with it. It's terrible footage. I hope just they terrible. edit it by deleting it. Yeah. Like, it's I just, just look at things like that. We are a culture of, yeah. like, collection of, of moments and memories. Which, oh, yeah. don't get me wrong, it's nice to take photos. I've got photos of Nat doing different things and things like that. But also, I feel like there's times where I'm like, I'm not going to take out my phone. Like, right. that, that zoo trip, I just, I took like three photos. Yeah. Partially because I was also responsible for another child that wasn't my own. And I was like, I'm not here to take photos. I'm here to make sure everyone gets back to the bus safely. Right, right. Um, uh, so well, it's, like, it's one of those things where I'm like, I just, you know, I'm here to observe. I'm here to enjoy and be present. Yeah. And not be like, oh, I got to get out my phone. <laughs> you know. I'm well, like, we, we went to the AJR concert a few weeks ago. And that was the thing. I saw so many people recording full songs. And I'm like, like and I know they're going to post. A lot of these people are going to post them to Instagram because I following the band they repost a lot of what people post for them and i see a lot of from the audience i see a lot of from every venue there's someone posting you know i saw this and here's the song and this and that and okay you posted it that's great you know i'm not going to sit there and watch if i come across someone's feed i'm not going to sit there and watch an entire 45 seconds to two minutes of a song that you recorded from some concert that you saw so that's not for me and then will you ever go back and relive that or will you just put the album on? Because here's the thing. Yeah. 
you're going to put the album Sounds on. like shit. I'm telling you right yeah. now, you're not going back and watching that video. So what is the point? That's of, a, I, I sat there oh. and just enjoyed the concert. I'm like, I'm not pulling my phone out. We took some pictures like of like selfies of us like at like with, when the when the lights came up and they had AJR in the thing. And, you know, like there were some pictures we took. But by and large, I'm like, I might sit, I'm going to enjoy this concert and be in the moment. I, I, I'm i never right. going to come back and rewatch this fucking shit. Yeah, because it'll sound like shit. Yeah. It'll look like shit. And also, that's a perfect example of like, put your shit away, enjoy the show, yes. enjoy the experience. You paid live to be it. here. Right. Be here. Just in, yeah. just live it. Right. Enjoy that moment. Like, be there and, and experience <clears throat> it. So, all that to say that tourism, <laughs> especially in the social media age, yes. is out of control as far as like someone takes that one photo. And I love seeing it too, where they're like, what the photo looks like, uh-huh. and then what the reality is, and there's like a line of people, <clears throat> yes, waiting those are the to, best. to go. Yeah, Th- that is the most. Just talk about one giving me diarrhea. Just watching these people, like we are waiting in line, right, to manufacture a moment, right, that I can post on Instagram, right. I'm like, I hate touristy shit anyway. Like I, I don't want to, I don't want to. Uh, I'm gonna be going to Seattle. Uh, soon, and I, you know where I'm not going? The fucking Space Needle. You know, I don't need to go there. Sure, I don't need to go there. Like, you know where you should go? You should where? go to a local tailor and just look at a regular needle in Seattle. No one will be there. Guarantee there's no lines. Probably. I hate everything you just suggested. I was Take a picture cool with it. the tailor. Maybe you get a good story. Yeah. Maybe you get their yeah. life story. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's like it's like telling someone to go to Chicago, you have to go to Navy Pier. Navy Pier, it's the essence of Chicago. It's not. It is a tourist nightmare. The only good thing there is they have is an IMAX theater. Like that's yeah. it. Like that's the only good that's thing. That's pretty there. good. I will say the Ferris wheel's fun. It, it it's fun it's to fine. it's fun to see the city from that view, but yeah. it's insane. It's like it's it, there's it's lunacy. like do you want to go to Mother Gump Strip Shack? <laughs> like it's like it's just it's just, there's, there's nothing authentic about Navy Pier at all, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm not a diehard Chicago guy, but I tell you where I don't send people when they come to like, where should I go yeah. when I go to Chicago? Navy Pier is not on the list mm. because I'm like, <clears throat> no. Like, I'm I'll like, send them to restaurants? North Avenue Beach before I send them to Navy, to Navy Pier. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's like, you could go, go to the museums, go to yes. like all these cool places. Go walk around Wrigleyville if you want. Like, yeah. Right. You know, hang out in Grant Park, sure. you know, yeah. like whatever. Like there's some cool places to go. Right. Navy Pier ain't on the list. It's like, it's, it's not, it's not it. So like, I just hate touristy stuff anyway. Sure. Like, I think it's cool to observe some of these cool things, right. And, and enjoy them. But the last thing I want to do, I remember when I was in Rome in high school, Jesus Christ, the place was just full of scammers. Just was like really? all they want to do is just trap. They would want to grab tourists and they're like, hey, you don't speak my language. Come over here. Hold out your finger. And you're like, what? what? They like, hold out your finger. And they start building a bracelet and they tie it to your arm and they're like five euros. And you're like, motherfucker. And they're like, no, Shit. they're like, mm, it's on your wrist. So you got to you got to give it to me now. You know, that's like wild, man. Yeah, That's there's a wild. bunch of shit like that. And then don't get me wrong, like seeing shit like the Coliseum was mind blowing. Oh, like, sure. Like absolutely yeah. mind blowing and seeing all that cool stuff. But it's also, it's like uh, going to Venice. Went to Venice. And my mom's like, you've got to get on a gondola. I'm like, why? You have to. You're in <laughs> Venice. You have to be. In a- I go, you realize the baseline cost for that is 100 euros? Is it really? Fuck you. That, and you have to negotiate. Ooh, I'm I like, didn't realize that. I was like, for what? Right. To have this, real, I look at this, I'm like, this is cringeworthy to be like, hey, this is a thing that is like, been generationally be like, you go to Venice and they get in a gondola and they push you through this dirty water and they <laughs> sing to you. I was like, remember what I said about what Jill hates? Yeah. She hates people's nightmare, absolute nightmare to be like, hey, hey. And I just see oh, just see, crap loads of tourists. That, if oh, there's yeah. ever a moment where we're all dude. out together and like, there's dude. like the people who like serenade you at the tables. Dude. Oh. Dude, that's you happening. you got to do it. That is you happening. Do it. You do it. You get out and you'd be like, oh, hold on a second. What's that? And you're just like, got a mic and you're like, oh my God. Oh, <laughs> you I will singing. be doing it. You should. Actually, that you know really what? Funny. I will. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. You should. You should do that. I'm going to pick up. Wouldn't expect it. It's when the, be like, what the fuck are you doing? When the guy the comes around doing? with the pepper mill and he's like, fresh <laughs> cracked pepper, I'm going to be like, excuse me. You never close your eyes anymore. Be like, what? What's happening? What is happening? Stop. Why is this no? 
You watch her just start throwing punches wildly. No! Make it stop! <laughs> Make it stop! I'm going to start throwing bows. If you get in you the just way, start that's going, your fault. Happy birthday! <laughs> it's not my birthday! Why are you singing to me? To Everyone's me. like, yay! She's like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. There's the play. That's it right there. Right. All right, cool. So now we have a plan. Right. When you guys come now up to Grand to Rapids, execute. that's yeah. happening. Execute. Yes. Execute Order 66. The other thing um, about Mount yeah. Fuji, like, I would say if you're going to this place to see this, instead of going to a gas station or a convenience store to try to get a picture of a mountain that's not on top of the roof, I'm sorry, spoiler alert, it's not. That's not where the mountain is. You know is. what? All those pictures of people leaning against the Leaning Tower pizza, pizza, Jesus, pizza, they're not holding it up. No. It's an optical it's, illusion. I hate to burst your bubble, everyone, but it's not true. Right? Not real. Yeah. Not Anyone real. standing by the Great Pyramids and they got their arm out and their finger is touching the top, the finger's not touching the top. That's not possible. Mm-hmm. Not true. Sorry. Yeah. I do not yeah. mean to be the, the bearer of the, bad The guys news. that are laying down in front of the Eiffel Tower to make it look like the Eiffel Tower is their cock. Right. Not their cock. Not their cock. Nor would you want it to be, I might no. add. Your cock's not made of metal. That's just false. Yeah, That's o- categorical no, that. false. It's old right. and it's rusty. It's rusty. And you'll just make it more rusty with the moisture. If you have sex, say that. That, they need a tetanus shot now. You don't yeah. want that. That's just too much. Yeah. It's too much It's not flexible. Yeah. It's not flexible. Yes. You don't want that. So what I'm saying is go try to find a different area to take a photo. Find the first fo- the next photo that goes viral. Walk around. Walk around mm-hmm. and see if you can find another. If you if you need to go there and take a photo, go explore. Maybe you find mm-hmm. another great photo. You're the first person to take that. And now you have the first photo that went viral. And then you start the next horrific. That's right. You know trend and then we find you and uh, we uh, you. hit you in the back of the head with uh, <laughs> with an object with and you get knocked club. out yeah. when you get knocked out uh, or you die one of the two either way know. yeah either way I'm okay with it um, <laughs> but I'm saying go explore I think if everyone did yeah. that and no one tried to recreate the shit just go there and try to find your own unique perspective on the thing that you're going to see mm-hmm. that makes it more yeah. fun yeah because this in this Mount Fuji stuff isn't the only place. I mean, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Chicago Rat Hole. Uh, I, that currently, j- just recently, that hole got filled. They got filled. Um, I know. I'm so bummed. I didn't get to see it. I wanted to come and take a picture with it, Doug. Mm. So anyone who's not familiar with this, uh, it's like a cartoon of a rat fell into cement, and there's like an indention in there of it, and it's like <laughs> very odd. Right. But apparently, this has been in Roscoe Village for several years like 20 years 20 plus years but january of this year it started getting super popular for whatever reason like people started making pilgrimages pilgrimages that's what i just said you did and that's we're sticking with it <laughs> pilgrimage pilgrimage you know I, I love what this is. Like, it's on Wikipedia. For Twenty to thirty years. Jesus. Wikipedia on the right. It's like Chicago rat hole. It's like location. It's like type hole hole. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, that's cool. That's cool. I also like uh, the the Twitter handle that they. I love Gatorade should be thicker. Why? <laughs> that's never. That's never. Also, a also look at the date. When, look, look at the date when they posted it. January. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many questions I have about this. There's I, a lot going on there's here. There's a lot going uh, on with that. Tweet. On January 6th, they posted uh, had to make a pilgrimage to the Chicago Rat Hole from <laughs> Gatorade should be thicker. <laughs> That's. I here's the thing. I don't disagree with it. I just I've never given it consideration. I want to hear more. I want to hear yeah. their argument. Why should Gatorade be thicker? I don't know if I want a more viscous uh, Gatorade to coat the throat. I don't think I need that. Boy, I'm thirsty. I've been working really hard. Give me that thick Gatorade. Give me that you know, thick, I with three C's. I want. <laughs> Gatorade thick. <laughs> Gatorade thick. They're like, we won! And they throw it, and this like sludge comes out like they got slimed from Nickelodeon back in the day. <laughs> People end up choking on it. People uh, start start laying down bets. They're like, what Gatorade color is it going to be? And is it going to be Gatorade or Gatorade thick? You know? <laughs> they throw it, it's like slop as it hits them. <laughs> it's, oh, God, get it. Coach is suffocating. Get it. Someone get it away from his He's mouth. Like, Ah, uh, he's like peeling it away. He's like, God damn it, not again. If it sits for too long, it it, it solidifies. It's just like, oh God, it's like cement. 
tell you what, it clogs up your intestines, I'll tell you that much. You don't necessarily pee it out. Right. It's more like 50-50 what comes out your to your, your your urinary tract versus your drink it your butthole. Drink it down, shit it out. Gatorade thick. <laughs> like, listen, it'll fill you up. All right. I'll tell you that much. You won't be hungry. <laughs> uh, so anyway, rat Chicago rat hole. <laughs> So this thing happens. It exists. It existed up until April twenty fourth of this year, um, but it got popular in January of this year. So much so that people were like coming in droves to see this rat hole. They were leaving garbage everywhere, like for the rat. They were leaving coins. Uh, people were drinking. Uh, bottles were smashed. A couple got married at the Chicago rat hole. Um, it became a whole thing. And apparently the people in Roscoe Village were like, we fucking hate this thing. It used to be like, oh, cute. Yeah, there's a little rat hole. But then people just started showing up and wrecking their fucking neighborhoods. Um, drinking all hours of the night. Being like, this one's to the rat. They were leaving like rat poison out there. All sorts of stuff. Just ruining the neighborhood because they're like, check out this little rat hole. And just being general, it's, a general nuisance. It's the stupidest. It's just, look, I I don't know why. Like, why, why did this... This is the stupidest fucking thing. Like, look, I... I, I think you had a ride at why did this. Why, why did just this? end there. Why, why, did, uh, why did this? Why did this? Why did this? Dear God, why did this? <laughs> By I Justin love, Strandland. I love that there's a debate, though, about this. That it was... Mm-hmm. You know, some locals believe it was actually a squirrel. Which means it was a ghost. <laughs> that reminds me, Justin... That reminds me. I have something. I holy shit. Uh-oh. Holy shit. I I I thought to myself, this is this is a big deal. This is a mind gap exclusive. 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 All right. So, I heard. Uh, God, what? I gotta remember the details exactly what I heard. Someone thought their house was haunted because things were moving around. Turns out it was a possum. Okay. That was in their house. Um, that was like moving shit around and things like that. And I was like, the theory stands. There Maybe not squirrels specifically, right. because I mentioned, I was like, it's probably squirrel. Fucking a possum. Just doing it. People are like, the house is haunted. No. Or the horrifying thing where a kid was like, dad, there's a monster in my closet and it turns out to be 50,000 bees. Did you hear about that? I don't think I did. Yeah. 50,000? Like, th- yeah. They're like, there's a monster in there that's like humming and growling. And it was 50,000 bees inside the wall. It was oozing out blood red honey was coming out of the wall. They thought they were living in some fucking poltergeist like film. Oh my God, dude, that's wild. They did a thermal imaging and there's like, there's a lot of heat behind that wall. And they cut it open. It was just like a massive hive of bees. Not the bees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the kid, the kid's like, there's a monster in my closet. They're like, shut up, Duncan. Go to bed. <laughs> And then they're like, "Oh my God, there's so many bees!" <laughs> I love the th- I love the fact that it was oozing blood red honey yeah. because yeah. like that you could not have a more uh uh well what uh, uh, bias confirmation right like yeah like like you're like you already are like it's haunted and it's like no it's not and it's like what's that fucking shit oozing out of the fucking wall. Even it's just regular colored hunter, you're like, what the fuck is that shit? Who's it out there? It's sticky. It's sticky. You do thermal energy I- imaging, and you're just like, shit, there's a lot of heat signature back there. Like, what is in my wall? <laughs> it's the predator behind it's there? Right. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I don't, like, it really, like, confirm- that's what it is, confirmation bias. Like, you just, <laughs> it's so easy to believe it, though. Like, you, like, if you were, if that was, if you were living that, you would mm-hmm. have to, for a brief moment, do you think that your brain would go to, could it be? Like, of course. A polter- like, what? Your brain tries to solve for X right. all the time. <laughs> and it will fill it yes. with, with whatever. It doesn't, it may not, you know, square the circle. It may not solve the equation, right. but your brain's going to solve for X. You, it's going to answer the question. Your brain's not going to immediately go, it's probably 50,000 bees. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, would that be strange if he goes, hold on. It's a ghost. No, it's probably 50,000 bees. <laughs> on that math test, that blank will be filled in with an answer. May not be the right answer, but it's getting filled in. You know, you'll, you'll be getting credit for at least answering the question. Because you're like, there's something happening there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's either a monster or 50,000 bees. One of the two. Because, <laughs> yeah. Because that's either ectoplasm or it's honey, you know. <laughs> And of course, they'll do what they do in the movies, which is like, doop, 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 and then they'll taste it. 
That's blood. We should go. Yeah, that's uh, that's blood. Oh, negative. That's good. That's, that's, oh, you know, <laughs> that's good. Universal donor. That's good to know. Let's go. There you go. Yeah, that's the sequel for Blood and Honey. That's going to be what. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, negative. Yeah, <clears throat> the universal donor. <laughs> It's just right of hospital. Well, look, Halloween two happened in a hospital. Blood and Honey two happens yeah. in a hospital. That's how it goes. Listen, I'm not a I'm not a squirrel doctor, uh, but uh, I I don't that does not look like a squirrel to me. That based looks on the tail, like a rat. Yeah, that looks like a rat. So, anyway, anyway. Uh, point being, if you're going to be a tourist, don't be an asshole. Uh, yeah. Also, explore the city instead of just going to all the tourist traps. Find something unique. Find something that no one else has found before. Right. You know Go what? Explore. You people crowdsource all sorts of information these days. Some to a, a the detriment of our intelligence and overall patience. But fucking find some friends that have traveled or you know in that area and be like, hey, where should I go? Right. Um, I'm going to Seattle. I know a lot of people, a lot of people in our community that are from there. I'm going to ask them where I should go. Yeah. Uh, if you're coming to Chicago, reach out to me or Justin. We can tell you where to go. Yep. We know some good places. We'll give you some insights. Find out that stuff. Get out of your comfort zone. Be safe, okay? Be safe. Right. Get out of your comfort zone and just try to try to find get off the beaten path. You know, like don't don't fall for this bullshit. Yeah, it's not. You're better than that. All right, hey, hey, come here. You're better than that. I know you are. I know you're scared. I know it's easy to go to some fucking guidebook. I know it's easy to look at Instagram and be like, oh, look at that cool photo. I want to go there. But when you see a line to take a manufactured photo, just know that a part of you is dying inside. And you know what? When God goes through the ledge on your life, that one's going in the no-no column. He's going to check that list, and he's going to be like, nope, that's that's a big mark. That's a big mark against you. You know what? Fucking get out of here. And he's going to take you to the gravel pit with a shotgun. And he's going to put you down. <laughs> perfect. And that Woo! is the perfect lead-in. You got the questions. We got the answers. All you do is ask. Practical. Practical. Practical, 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 ask practical, duh. You know, it doesn't always end perfectly. Sometimes, you know, I force segues, but you know what? Sometimes it's fucking gorgeous. Sometimes. And I know it, and you know yep. it, and the listener knows it, and here we are. <laughs> I honestly think that that should have been the practical Doug, is how not to be an asshole while you're on vacation. I think we did this segment already. But we're going to do another one because we love because you. Because we love And we you. still have time. <laughs> So if you've never been here for Practical Doug before, uh, or asked Practical Doug before, Practical Doug is a small Doug that lives inside of Large Doug and helps guide Large Doug through all of life's quandaries, its quagmires, its mysteries. Uh, and if you want to ask Practical Doug a question, you can on any social media, at MindGapPodcast, hashtag AskPracticalDoug, or you can jump into the aforementioned Discord. There's a channel dedicated to Ask Practical Doug where you can ask Practical Doug anything that your heart desires. What's true in your heart? What's the song it sings? Let that question come out and get an answer from Practical Doug. Last week, we pulled one, right? We pulled one from Emilio, and it was a fantastic question and an even better answer, if I do say so myself. This week, we didn't have anyone asking questions, so we went back to our well, Am I the Asshole on Reddit? And Doug, this one is a slight different one. It's not Am I the Asshole. It's Would I Be the Asshole? Ah, This person oh, needs advice and... We're going to help this person. So, uh, such variation 6724 asks, would I be the asshole if I eloped because my siblings had parents-only weddings? Allow me to elaborate. <clears throat> I, female 29, and my fiance, male 32, are getting married later this year. We've been engaged for almost two years now. We were waiting to get married until we were both in a good financial situation, and we finally feel like it's time. Originally, I wanted a wedding with all our immediate families invited, parents, siblings, grandparents. But over the past two years, two of my siblings got married, and only my parents were invited. My siblings and I are very close. We hang out every week. We talk all the time. Generally, we get along amazingly. One of my f siblings, a male 27, got married to a woman that most of my family does not like. We all treat her well and keep our thoughts to ourselves. To be honest, none of us see this relationship lasting longer than five years. Glowing endorsement so far. But we'll never say that to them. They wanted a small wedding with just parents on both sides. But when asked why, they could not give a reason. Kind of hurt that we the siblings weren't allowed to be there, but we moved on. My other siblings felt the same way. Another sibling got married, had a pretty decent reason for not wanting, for, for wanting just parents. His spouse 
has a toxic family that treats her horribly. So she only wanted to invite her parents on and one of her siblings originally. But if my brother invited his parents and siblings, we would outnumber her guests quite a bit. He didn't want her to be upset. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Ended up being just a parent wedding. So here's my dilemma. I know I'm being petty, but I'm still upset that for a family as close as ours, the siblings weren't invited. So I honestly have been debating eloping to Vegas with my fiance and having a more expensive honeymoon instead of having an actual wedding ceremony as we originally planned here in our hometown. I've always thought the idea of being married by Elvis in Vegas was fun. I know it's cheesy, but I love it. My fiance thinks it would be funny, so he's down for it. We would pay for our parents to come to Vegas with us and be part of the wedding, but no one else would be invited. I know my siblings would be upset, but I would tell them the truth behind why we decided to elope. So would I be the asshole if I eloped because my siblings all had parents only weddings? No. That sounded like a fucking digital. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I was like, it, it was AI written question and an AI answer. Yeah. yeah no. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, and practical Doug is concerned, uh, when it comes to your wedding, do whatever the fuck you want. Yes, sir. Like, don't, don't feel like you uh, have to, you know, cower to tra- tra- tradition to anything like that. Like, if you're getting married, you do what you want. And people who are like, "Well, I'm paying for it." Fuck you. This isn't a goddamn movie. This isn't a record. You know, it's like, yeah. who gives a shit? Like, if you want to give someone the money for the wedding, let them do what they want. You know, it's cool. And it, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, fucking elope. If you really want to do that, don't do it out of spite. Out of don't, don't do it for the wrong reasons. Right. Do it because you truly want to do that, and that's the wedding that you want to have. If that's truly what you want to do. Then do that. If you're trying to get one over just to piss, like to be like, you know, thumb your nose at people, don't do that. Right. You know, think think about like what you really want to do. <laughs> and if it's if, if it's if it's if you like the no hassle, keeping it simple, and you really want to have a nice honeymoon and save the the money, fucking do that. Weddings are a cottage industry, man. They're fucking overpriced. They're stupid. And you know, I, I prefer a simple easy going thing and then have fun go do that if that's truly what you do what you want to do do that right. otherwise really think about right. it don't just do it just to piss people off absolutely and i would say to this person such variation uh 6724 if you are still harboring these feelings you have the you have the chance to be the bigger person here you have the chance mm-hmm. if if family means that much to you if you wish that you were there with your siblings at their weddings and if you truly do wish that they could be at yours. If you set this beef aside, this these hurt feelings aside, and you're like, we're so close. I would love to have you here, but I feel like I shouldn't invite you because you didn't invite me. Don't do a tit for tat. You're yeah. going to regret not having your family there if that's what you truly want. So be the bigger I agree. Person. Based on what they were saying, they were like, man, my, my siblings mean the world to me. Then just right. invite your siblings. Then invite them. Yeah. Invite yeah. your parents. Invite your siblings. Tell everyone, you know, maybe. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I would say I'm, I'm 100% with you. Don't don't let the don't let the uh, the, the hurt grievance. feelings, the grievance ruin the memories that are going to last a lifetime. Like if this is something yeah. that's important, be the bigger person, bridge that gap, heal that wound and uh, you know, be the be the north star for your family. If I could go do corporate what with it. you want to do. And and think about what that means to you to right. get married. If and you want to elope without your parents, do that too. Whatever, fucking do that. Whatever you want to do, think about what you really want to do, right. and then do that. Right, that's what matters. Another yeah. idea would be to tell each of your siblings that you're going to get married in a different location, and then just have like them this. show up there, and uh, you know whoever shows up at the right location, whoever chooses correctly, that's the only sibling you talk to for the rest of your life. Or you have them solve a riddle to find out the location of where you're going to be. Create a cipher? Create a cipher. You could do a Caesar cipher. That's the most easiest one you can do. Okay. That's the easiest one you can do to do it. Um, but see if they can figure it out. And if they can, then they can come to the wedding. Right. Say In it's going to be one know, of these 10 places. I'm come. Yeah. To the wedding. You know? Yeah, to the wedding, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I like actually. I like that. If you can solve this yeah. riddle, you can come. Yeah, right. <laughs> to the I'm gonna come. to the wedding. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so okay, you are. Uh, would I be the asshole if I eloped because of this? Yes, you would be the asshole. I'll say, if you eloped because your parents had siblings only weddings, I do think that would yes. make you the asshole. If you're doing it because it's what you want, fine. 
Yeah. It's decided. It is decided. Yeah, I might even say. Ew. All right, Justin, what do you got? What do you got to recommend this week? I'm gonna recommend uh, the movie. Uh, this I watched this a little while ago, but uh, been on my list. Past Lives. It was uh, up for the Oscar. Uh, I don't know which one, but it was it was nominated this year. Uh, I think it was for Best Picture. Um, it was very very good. Uh, it's not again. It's not your typical. Um, I'll say. It is and isn't. It, it kind of has DNA from both being a Hollywood film and a foreign film. It moves much slower, uh, but it is an interesting character study as well and how relationships can ebb and flow and how you can question what could have been. Um, I thought it was just, it was very interesting, very slow paced, but very interesting character study. So Past Lives, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, check it out if you're looking for more of an introspective movie. Nice, and that's an A24 film. Yes, it is. Hmm, interesting. I, too, would recommend an A24 film called How to Talk to Girls at Parties. Okay. Um, it's weird, but it's fun. Um, and it's also, uh, the dog doesn't die in it. Thank um, God. There is, there is no dog. Um, I can say the same thing for past lives. No, no dog died. Good. Yeah. We're here to let you guys know our sole purpose of this podcast now is to watch movies and let you know whether or not the dog dies. That's what we're here for. Um, now it takes place in the 1970s in London, and uh, it's about this. It's got first of all, it's got Elle Fanning, uh, Nicole Kidman, uh, Alex Sharp, and some other folks in it. And it's about this uh, young boy, and you know who's like an anarchist, a punk rocker, and he they come across this weird group of people uh, at this you know house party one night and uh it's basically you know the girl that they meet is an alien and it's a wild romp through all this sort of stuff trying to figure out who you are what matters and it's very interesting it's very fun it's weird but i really really enjoyed it i thought it was really really fun so very cool um it's a part of the A24 collection on Max, so if you're looking to check it out, it's it's definitely got good positive vibes in it, so it's not dark or anything like that. So it was a nice, it was a nice uh, uh, palate cleanser there compared to most of the shit I was watching at the time, where I'm like, <laughs> good god, I needed this, yeah. so I recommend it. Very so cool. You should definitely check that out. All right, gang, another successful podcast in the can. We appreciate you. We recorded in the toilet, is what I meant. Um, <laughs> And uh, what, uh, if you want, uh, please uh, check us out on our social media at Mind Gap Podcast. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mind Gap Podcast. Do us a favor and share that shit around. It means a lot to us if you could do that. Uh, check the link in the description to uh, links to our Discord to be part of the Discord family. Check the links for our Patreon and for our merch. And be sure to check out Justin online as well. On Instagram, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's a fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, check us out on any platform where you can find podcasts. You'll be able to find us. Go ahead and like, share, subscribe, rate, review, all those things. But the big one is always sharing because it's caring. Let people know that we exist. It's the only way we're going to help. Uh, you're going to help us grow. And we love growing. You know we do. And then TweetState.com on Inst uh, TweetState.com. <laughs> You can find TuiStaith.com on Instagram. It's really weird how we, we changed our handle. Uh, and then Love and Improv Film, find us online. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Fuck them. Yeah, we're growers, not showers. Uh, with that, I'll say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you so much. Listeners, viewers, thank you so much. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.